so today I join you with another watercolor swatch and unbox. Here we have the Mission Gold watercolors. You guys have probably seen other videos on YouTube about these. And I have some experience with Mission Gold in the past. They make some of my favorite colors. So I decided to take advantage of the really good prices that Amazon has. So I think I paid 41 for 24 tubes. And these are the full size tubes. So I know in the Holbein video, we had a little five millimeter tubes and that was a good price for 18 five millimeter tubes. But if you like, if you know you enjoy watercolor and you'd like something larger and you don't mind spending a little bit more, these can be the way to go. And they come in a really nice box. Mission watercolor paint, outstanding color formation, excellent clarity, and the best high transparency. Selecting the best pigments from German, Swiss, and Japan, etc. Vivid color, transparency, and light resistance are excellent. Reduced a color difference after drying by making as a golden mixing ratio of a pigment and a medium. Excellent in the absorb... Man, that, <laughs> that kind of went downhill. Um, excellent in the absorption of a brush while a paint is hardened. With a special manufacturing technology, the absorption of a brush is excellent even after a long period of drying and you can maintain the concentration of a color formation as applied the paint from a tube straightly. And these are Korean watercolors. Um, and I've gotten open stock tubes from Jerry's Artorama. I have Compose Rose right here. Uh, marine Blue is slightly out of reach and I love, love, love those colors. Um, so I'm really excited to try their other colors and I'm sort of looking, um, I've been going through my Windsor & Newton half pans really quickly. So I've been sort of looking for other um, good paints that will work for my pages. So, all right, so we've got 24 color set. We get Chinese white, lemon yellow, permanent yellow deep, yellow orange, permanent red, permanent rose, rose matter, opera, permanent violet, cerulean blue, cobalt blue number one, peacock blue, ultramarine deep, indigo, viridian, hookers green, sap green, yellow ochre clear. So that's a transparent, oh, it looks like chartreuse in the pic, um, like right underneath. And chartreuse isn't really a yellow ochre, it's more like a green gold. Raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, red brown, van dyke brown, and ivory black. So this is a really good selection of colors. And their gold line is the highest line they've got. And we've got some paperwork inside, which is kind of cool. So I'm just gonna kind of read over some of it with you guys. So colors by nature. And then, oh, nice. It's a watercolor chart of all the gold colors available. And I think what I'm gonna do off camera, oh, with the permanence, which is really nice, the light fastness, the permanence, and a key at the top. So you're gonna wanna hold on to this if you got this set, cause this is important. I'll zoom in so you guys can kind of get a look at that. I may scan this and put it up on my blog. Mission, caring human and nature with priority. Mission changes the global standard for watercolor through the development of new technologies and materials. Modern pigments. Mission Gold watercolors are made with the most progressive pigments available today and deliver exceptional clarity, transparency, transparency, strength, and high light fastness. All Mission Gold watercolors are intensely pigmented without gummy thickening agents that can hinder brilliance and darken over time. The result is unparalleled color and vibrancy that sets a new world standard. Color uniformity. All Mission Go watercolors have a consistent color strength and viscosity, a challenging standard to uphold when considering the hundreds of different pigments available today. This consistency allows artists to get a feel for all the colors just by trying a few of them. Non-toxic ingredients. That's a big one for me because I have cats who drink my watercolor water. Um, and it says no cadmium. The uh, management philosophies of Mission Gold are to protect our customers' health and alleviate environmental pollution. All Mission Gold watercolors are created with only safe non-toxic pigments, non-cadmium, and ingredients. As well, the Mission employs the preservatives for cosmetic applications, not the industrial products containing, a lo containing lots of formaldehyde. So if I understand that correctly, they're using cosmetic grade, which means you can put it on your skin, etc. Um, and their watercolors. Not saying that you should put these watercolors on your skin, but you know, watercolor does get on your skin. It gets on your hands. It gets all over the place. Um, and if you have nervy pets, like some of us do, then this could be, you know, it's an improvement, I guess. 
excellent dispersion. Solvency, brilliance, and particularly the light fastness of watercolor are impacted by the quality of ingredients used. We pair our carefully selected pigments with only the finest mediums, which are kept free of chemical additives that can hinder color. Mission Gold watercolors also utilize a premium dispersant that allows paint to immediately and evenly dissolve in water and flow evenly over surfaces. I have noticed that. Um, the result is pure color that is unparalleled in intensity. And I've also, with my limited experience, I have like five. Before this, I had like five Mission Gold colors and I definitely felt that was true for all of them with my favorite, favorite being marine blue. Beautiful color. Oh, what is thickening additives? Okay, free of thick thickening agents and fillers. Silicon dioxide is an artificial agent commonly used to thicken watercolors. We're gonna have to look into that. Not, not because I'm disclaiming there, but that kind of information can be hard for me to find when I'm writing blog posts. So that's, it's a lead guys. Because this additive is capable of dissolving in water, colors will appear muddy and granular on paper as pigment particles cling to these solids. Mission Gold watercolors are naturally viscous and the first ever to be manufactured without chemical fillers or additives. The result is colors that are vibrant, pure and transparent, even when mixed with other Mission Gold colors. Those are some high promises, but there's some pretty promising promises. And then we get this five keywords, five standards of mission watercolors. Is this, yeah, I think this is the same information we just looked at in different languages. So next up, look how beautiful. So they are actually the slightly smaller tubes. They're not the little five milliliter tubes. I will grab one of my full binds, or maybe they are. Huh, huh, huh. So slightly bigger than the whole bind. How big are you? Seven milliliter, that's why. But smaller than the Mission Gold tubes you can get at Jerry's. So still a decent deal, not as good a deal, but I'm not, my concern isn't so much, uh, like I said, I'm trying to find good replacements for some of the Winsor & Newton colors that I'm just burning through really quickly. And I'm finding that two watercolors last me a little bit longer because I can get like three refills, three to three plus refills. Um, so um, the size is kind of like, eh, but it's also like, well, as I run out of these, I'll get the big tubes. So we're gonna take a look. And okay, so there isn't, so, with cheap watercolors, not that these are cheap watercolors, but with cheap watercolors in a tube, I've noticed they come with like the little metal cap to kind of keep them from gooshing all over the place. And these don't. So I can go straight away into swatching them. And I'm gonna do this the same way I did the Holbein set. So I'm gonna do it two ways. We're gonna do it straight from the tube. And then I'm going to set up, I bought a palette to put these in. I'm gonna set up my palette off camera and I'm going to fill my pans off camera. And tomorrow, after they've all had a chance to dry, I'll check in with you guys and we'll swatch the pan colors and that way we can see how they reconstitute since they kind of said that they reconstitute really well. So that is another thing that I'm really excited about is not all colors reconstitute brilliantly. Um, so, we're going to be testing today on a nicer watercolor paper. We're going to be testing on Canson's Lockrell Heritage. This is a um, cotton rag paper. Whoop. And we're going to start by doing a dot test. And I think I'm going to... So we have a white, a Chinese white. I'm going to put a line on the paper. And I'm gonna let that dry for five minutes and come back to it. So we're gonna begin with Chinese white. Um, I will just have to do a follow-up blog post with all the information I have available and scans of the information that was included in this. And that way you guys can kind of peruse that at your own leisure. So we put a dot of the Chinese white on the paper and unfortunately it seems like there's a bit of blue to it or it's activating. It seems like there's a bit of blue to it. Hmm, I'll have to check that out at another time. And I'll also cover all the light fastness and transparency stuff on the blog as well. 
next up, lemon yellow. Actually, I think it might be best for everyone if I do this in time lapse and then I read through the names with you guys. That uh, is all the colors. They are still wet. I'm gonna go through them with you now, starting from the top left and going to the bottom right. And then I'll check in with you again after they've had a chance to dry. We have Chinese white, lemon yellow, permanent yellow deep, yellow orange, permanent red, permanent rose, rose matter, and bright opera. Starting up here, we have bright clear violet, and it's actually a very nice violet. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue number one, peacock blue, ultramarine deep, indigo, which is more like a blue black. It's a, a different indigo. Um, I haven't ever seen one quite that color, so that's interesting. Viridian. And then at the bottom, sap green. Oh, no. Sorry, hooker's green. And then starting at the top again, we have sap green. Yellow ochre number one. Raw sienna. Burnt sienna. Burnt umber red brown, Van Dyke brown, and finally, lamp black. So I'm gonna give these a chance to dry and I'm gonna start filling my half pan. And this is the same type of palette as I had in Holbein, 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 um, unboxing swatch review. I really like these palettes, they're very inexpensive on Amazon. Uh, it's a Meaden palette and you can find a link in the description below. Hey guys, it is the morning of the next day. My watercolor swatches have had a chance to dry. They're still fairly brilliant. The only complaint I have is this one, which might be the cerulean blue. A lot of gum arabic came out of it in the beginning. Uh, hopefully that will not be a problem in the future. So, oh, and also that white, it still looks kind of suspicious, right? So I went ahead and Build up my Maiden palette. Look how pretty those colors are. There is some cracking with the yellow, but that's not gonna affect, or it really shouldn't affect performance. The only, only effect that's gonna have is an aesthetic effect on, you know, oh, my watercolor palette isn't perfect. And uh, <laughs> I'm not really, I don't really care about that. So, Do -do 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 We're gonna try and get, actually that might not work. I might use that to make my map later on. I guess we're gonna do a fresh new page. I really need to find someone to sponsor me on the watercolor paper because these tests eat up a lot of it. Okay, so are we all ready? Are we all set? We got a spray bottle here. We're going to give it a, come on, any day. There we are. Fantastic. All right, so using some clean water and a very nice brush, we're gonna re-swatch this. So this is our dried reactivation palette swatch test. And this is how I'm more, most likely to use watercolors for my regular watercolor usage and my regular watercolor comp. Ooh, ooh, okay. Okay. Things got gummy real quick. 
So these may be watercolors that maybe you don't, you don't spritz reactivate because that, that scarlet just got like soupy real fast, which was not what I wanted. It may not have had time to fully dry either. I mean, I did allow these to dry overnight, which is usually enough for this sort of thing. And so far, we're still getting really beautiful, vibrant colors, which I'm excited by. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Time to move on to the next row. I'm gonna save the white till the end. Seems like all of these colors reactivate quickly, which is something I find true for pan watercolors. Now, I sat through a Windsor & Newton seminar a couple years ago as part of Hands-On Creativity, and their rep, who was a watercolor paper, painter, to be fair, he'd actually taught at LSU, um, and he couldn't tell me whether or not having a dehumidifier would help in humid climates, which it's a little like, really, you're from Louisiana, dude. You should know. But uh, he said that Windsor and Newton, the semi-moist half pans were the only ones designed to be reactivated again and again. But the longer I paint and the more I meet other painters, the more I find out that a lot of them just work from dry tube watercolors. Oh, come on you. Ooh, another soup. This might be the set that does not do so well with being dried on a palette. So at the time, I kind of took his word for it. And most of, for several years, most of the paints in my, excuse me, most of the paints in my palette for seven, my Cara pages were Windsor Newton semi-moist. But as time has progressed and I found other colors I liked, I started, um, I started adding them to my palette as well. So we want to test the white. So I'm going to draw a line down here. And I have, I have to be honest, had mixed results. Certain brands, certain colors. It's a your mileage may vary thing. But having two watercolors in your pans can be really useful and it can give you some of the colors that you actually want to use. So like, for example, this Magello set has very vibrant colors. I've had trouble getting this kind of vibrancy from my Windsor & Newton colors. Um, I happen to, pr I mean, I like bright colors, but I happen to prefer um, muted colors for certain projects, so it's not the end of the world. But if you really, really love bright colors, this set can deliver that. So I'm gonna let this dry for five minutes and then we're gonna try that Chinese white out again. Okay, so my ink should have had time to dry. We're grabbing some of that Chinese white. We had problems with it the other day from the tube, and this seems more blue already. It seems more blue than I'm used to Chinese whites being. All right, it doesn't seem to have any of the reactivation problems. Um, it is not really covering it. I don't know if you guys can see. Typically whites like this are used to create semi-opaque to opaque uh, pastels within a palette. So they're not actually used for corrections or for coverage. They're just a mixing white. Um, I honestly don't ever keep a white in my own palettes. I don't, I don't buy white watercolors. I buy white gouache. And I might use that to make a pastel if I'm looking to make a pastel, but I don't really use the whites. And they're included in like every set, which it's kind of a bummer because it's like that's another color I could have, but you know. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching this unbox and swatch of the Mich Magello Mission Gold 24 color seven milliliter tube set from Amazon. You can find links to everything down in the description below. Um, as always, it was a pleasure hanging out with you guys and I hope to see you again really soon for the field test for this video. If you like what I do here, you can, uh, it would help out a lot if you head over to headed over to Patreon at patreon.com slash soup and checked out my Patreon page and considered becoming an art nerd. It would also really help if you headed on over to natosoup.blogspot.com, my main blog, and checked out my watercolor basic series. It is a watercolor course designed to help people learn how to watercolor 
focusing on watercolor comics. So if that sounds awesome to you, you should go check that out and tell all of your friends. That would help me out immensely. And check out my own watercolor comics, 7 Inch Kara, at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. And I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye, guys.